हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज शोमैन फ्रॉम ऑयल एंड गैस फील्ड क्वालिटी कंट्रोल वी हैव स्टार्टेड ए न्यू सीरीज ऑफ नॉन मेटेलिक पाइपलाइंस एंड नाउ वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द आर टी पी पाइपलाइंस टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग हाइड्रो टेस्टिंग ऑफ आर टी पी पाइपलाइन सम टिप्स ऑफ सक्सेसफुल टेस्ट एंड ऑल्सो द बैक फिलिंग विच इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर नॉन मेटेलिक पाइपलाइन सो लेट अस स्टार्ट बिफोर यू गो टू द हाइड्रो टेस्ट डायरेक्टली वील डिस्कस सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर और रिफ्रेश पाइप कंट्रैक्शन नॉन मेटेलिक पाइपलाइन दिस इज अ पॉइंट टू पॉन्डर इफ आर टी पी इज हाइड्रोटेस्टेड बिफोर ए रिजिड राइजर सिस्टम इज इंस्टॉल्ड एक्स्ट्रा केयर मस्ट बी टेकन इफ बोथ एंड्स आर नॉट प्रॉपरली कंस्ट्रेंड ड्यूरिंग हाइड्रोटेस्ट द आर टी पी विल कंट्रैक्ट स्लाइटली दिस कैन लीड टू प्रॉब्लम्स एज रिजिड राइजर्स एंड आर टी पी मे नॉट लाइन अप करेक्टली In dealing with the situations like these, there are three main courses of action. The most desirable option is to have the riser installed before installation of the pipe. In this scenario, the pipe can be attached; no contraction is allowed to occur. The second option is to install a temporary pile to which the pipe can be attached. This would allow hydro testing and prevent the pipe from contracting. once the riser connector has been made up this temporary pipe could then be removed the final option would be to wait until the hydro test is complete to mark the location of the rise in this way the riser can be made up to the contracted position of the pipe under no circumstances should field personnel attempt to stretch the pipe please remember to properly secure the pipe at points where it exits the conduit pipeline with relatively little friction between line pipe and the conduit contraction is also likely to occur at these points now we will be entering into hydro test all rtp line pipe is tested at 1.5 times rated operating pressure before being shipped in the factory and by following installation procedure properly a first time successful field test should be the routine result however the field test is the last line of defense the point at which anything that slips through the net should be caught before it becomes a damaging service failure when field test procedures are adhered to and a successful test is achieved service failure is very rare filling the system should be filled by pumping a pig poly or squeezy in front of the fluid to help force the air out of the system in systems containing tees and branches it may not be suitable to use a pig as the pig may get caught in one of the side branches fluid should enter the system at the lowest point and air must be vented from the highest point or points allow fluid to flow through the vents until there is no evidence of air coming out from the system when all air is removed seal the vents and prepare for testing caution is entrapped air will cause testing problems and may result in overpressuring the system use care to ensure that all air is removed if you follow these steps which i am going to discuss now will guarantee a safe test demonstrate whether leaks are due to pipe problem or a backfill problem and prevent problems from shrinkage stress that takes place when pressure exceeds the pipe's rated pressure if requested a rtr representative can be present during the test from the manufacturer the pipe should be backfilled as completely as possible leaving only the connectors exposed this is done for two reasons first one is backfilling is one of the most common sources of pipe damage and would not be detected if the pipe is tested only before backfilling i told you that during backfilling the mechanical equipment are damaging mechanically on the pipe body which result in leakage during hydro test this is also from my experience 
RTP line pipe will contract in length at pressures above normal rated pressure and backfilling will prevent any movement. This is the second reason why you should backfill the whole line and keep only the connectors open. Fill the pipe with water taking all reasonable steps to remove air or gases. Raise pressure slowly less than 20% rated pressure per minute to around 500 psi maximum and check for leaks in the exposed connection. The purpose of this test is to find any obvious connector leaks or gross damage before backfilling. Raise the pressure slowly, maximum 20% rated pressure per minute in 500 psi increment and hold for 5 to 15 minutes at such increase. Check for the leaks. Continue to raise the pressure in the manner until reaching the full test pressure and hold. When practical, complex piping systems should be broken into smaller runs for testing. The guidelines are warning and must be followed carefully to avoid injury to the personnel and or damage to the equipment. Caution. Testing with fluids under pressure can be hazardous. Personal injury and or equipment damage is possible. Never attempt to tighten a connector while pressurized. Testing with air or gas is extremely dangerous. Should not be normally undertaken. Gas is compressible and stored energy in much higher than with the fluid. If gas test is proposed, consult with the manufacturer technical management. The recommended test pressure is 1.2 to 1.5 times the rated operating pressure of the system we discussed at the beginning with a maximum of 1.5 times the rated operating pressure of RTP line pipe. Caution is before the line is pressurized it must be at least partially covered. High pressure fitting should be blocked. Due to nature of composite material, some time may be needed to stabilize the pipe at the desired test pressure. Over pressure up to 200 psi above the target test pressure is acceptable to allow for this stabilization. With pressure stabilized, start the clock and monitor the pressure. Note, this RTP pipe expands slightly during the initial pressurization. It is therefore recommended that the pipe to be allowed to stabilize to pressure for a period of time before beginning the actual test. The stabilization period usually 30 minutes up to 5000 feet in length but can be longer if the line is much greater length. If it is usually obvious that pipe stabilizes and generally slow pressure decline less than 25 psi per hour. During the time, no need to be scared. This is only because of stabilization. No, there is no pipe leaks. Having excessive air in the line will also lengthen the stabilization period. Temperature changes cause the test fluid to expand or contract, resulting in changes of pressure also. Ambient temperature should be tracked to provide compensation on pressure graphs. Test pressure should be held for a minimum of two hours and preferably four hours. The customer and or applicable regulations may require longer testing periods. Test period as long as 24 hours are not uncommon. When the pipe pressure is raised above the rated operating pressure, normally only for the test purposes, the pipe will try to contract in length. These forces are relatively small and backfilling the pipe will normally provide enough restraining forces to prevent the actual movement. But if the pipe has sections not backfilled, for example, at the end to the risers or connections, precautions must be taken to provide support for any contraction that may be passed to the risers or to isolate other parts of the system. Particular care must be taken if there are long unrestrained sections such as in non-backfill ditch and above ground installation or a pull through or river crossing as well as exerting force on other parts of the system RTP line pipe will tend to tighten around any bends or restraints and can be damaged. So provision must be made for this. RTP engineers can calculate the amount of contraction and the contraction forces and provide advice how to offset it. 
precaution is connector should be installed in straight sections of the pipe well away from any bends and the pipe should be supported usually by backfilling around the bend area. Backfilling After successful completion of the test or before the hydro test, we must backfill most portion of the line as we discussed. Before backfilling, RTP line 5 should be inspected to ensure there is no visible damage and that the pipe is bedded on smooth soil so that the weight of the backfilling will not press the pipe down or a point load underneath. Care should be taken with backfilling, particularly first one feet of cover should not contain any large rocks and the pipe should be covered gently taking care not to allow mechanical equipment to come in the contact with the pipe. I told you the failure I have seen in RTP pipe is because of this mechanical equipment damaging the pipe body and hiding it to the construction management or the seniors and backfilling this without any repair. Large rocks, large pieces of frozen soil and tree trunks can be used once a reasonable cover over the pipe is achieved. Tracer wear. Tracer wear or tape should be used to allow easy location of the pipe in future. Regulations in some areas, usually areas where ground lightning strikes are common, dictate that the tracer wear should be located in the ditch above 6 inch above the pipe and continuous contact with the pipe should be avoided. RTP manufacturer can supply the tracer wear if requested. Static discharge. RTP line pipe is an electrical insulator and in applications that involve transport of nonpolar fluids such as dry gas, liquid fuels or pure hydrocarbons, especially at high velocities, a static charge may be generated on pipe surfaces. Grounding and static control procedures should be employed during an intervention. Static electric discharge can ignite a flammable gas or a combustible atmosphere. In RTP line pipe application involving transport of wet gases or liquid or multi-phase flow containing water, no significant static charge is generated on the pipe surface. Now, in case we find any repair of RTP section, we generally replace the pipe section with a new one and new connectors will be connected together. It is as simple as that. So repairing the portion of the RTP got leaked during hydro test is not possible. At this moment, the only repairing is cut out the damaged portion after identifying the area from where the leak is revealed and replace with a new good section. Since our channel is for quality and inspection, documentation is a vital part. Let us see what kind of documentation we are generally maintaining for RTP pipeline. A RTP certified installer will complete the job specification documentation like job safety analysis. This is part of safety but is very important. He will conduct daily tailgate meetings or toolbox meeting to address all aspects of safety specific installation. This information will be documented. There is a job log. RTP representative will document a job log contains the date of installation including foot markers, serial numbers of pipe installed, connector locations, a chronological account of activities and other pertinent information. Quality checklists and joint map or hydro test package, final reinstatement, these are all important documentation. It documents major steps, inspection and hold points in the installation process and is signed by RTP technician and customer representative. So like uh, metallic pipeline, here we also have a database but this is not a well database it will be a joint database the number of joints and for better traceability we will also mention the RTP pipe number connected so in case there is a repair we can mention the kilometer and the pipe number to have a specific location for this thank you guys that's end of the video today another one video maybe we will be completing the RTP then we'll go for RTL signing off Showman.